All right, this is one of my favorite features of AI, taking unstructured content and turn it into structured content. I'm gonna show you a, real, a few real practical examples uh, where I take unstructured content from emails, uh, web research, and even images, and we turn it into structured content that we can enter into the database uh, thanks to the power of AI. Uh, so let's go watch this video and learn how to take advantage of this just amazing feature with AI. We could do it in the past with code, but now we could just use AI. It's really nice. All right, the first one we're going to dig into is meeting notes now these are coming in through an email but again you can imagine this coming in from anywhere google drive or whatever and um when the meeting notes come in um let me zoom in one moment um we're just going to grab one of the fields again could be anything um so and then the ai will take those and we have our our, our wicked lame prompt here but we we will pull off structured output as you see on the right by using a built-in uh, feature. Now look at the system message. That's a system message, by the way. But then we add the structured output. We added that by choosing the green box above, okay? Now we don't have the enable fallback model. That's cool, but let's focus on the structured output. And then we get this particular structured output parser. Now what's gonna happen here is it, nothing would be there, obviously. I already did this, so let's move that and add this. And you'll have three options. One is, oh, oh, one is depreciated. Good. We don't need to talk about that one. The item list parser is interesting. I never use it, but it could come in handy for tagging. I use this one. And then when you open it, you get generic. Uh, you get the generate, and then you get the more specific one. But I'm going to stick to the, the one I typically use. Now, did that go somewhere? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's right to my, right next to me. Okay. So now you'll see I made an object, and that object is what I wanted to output. And we have a title, and we have a TLDR, we have a copy, we have a who, and we have a follow-up. And then I tell it, hey, this is a string. And, and there's so many ways to do this. This has been working well for me. And then there's an array of strings, so you can kind of go either way. And then I can auto-fix, which is really a neat addition that happened recently with N8N. And so now when it fails on the first time, if it does, which um, I'll talk about after, you could try again seamlessly. Uh, so let me remove the one I accidentally added. Here we go. Let's get rid of that. And then add the one that was here and connect it back to the model because that's what redoes the, uh, that's what checks it if it fails. And so you'll seamlessly have a try again if it does fail. Uh, so now when we run this, we're going to get the output and it's going to be that object. Now it's not an array, it's an object. And I'll talk about arrays later. And then we can insert it into the database or other things. You'll see later on what I mean by other things. But you know, the first big win here is database. Like, I can go now right into the database with this unstructured data, this email. And um, there you go. Just everything lines up. That is really powerful. Uh, I'll give a few more examples to show how it's just so powerful that we can do this. Now, look at I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo. Just so you can see how you don't have to use the latest and greatest model all the time. But again, I'll show where that doesn't work later as well. All right. Um... We're using the AI agent, um, and so, yeah, it comes together nicely and quickly here. I tried Grok before. It wasn't as good with a Q, so you got to choose the right models here and play around. All right, let's do the next one. All right, just a quick add here. Um, I like this Ridge Charger. It's the Rig MagSafe compatible magnetic power bank, and I have an Android phone, so sometimes I need it, but here's an Apple phone. And you can see that it not only does MagSafe in the stand and everything, but you'll see in a moment it can connect via the lightning port for the older phones. Um, and that's what I really like about it because you remember, you got to remember when you do wireless, you're always losing energy as you charge. So with the wire charging, you get faster charge and just, you know, you're going to get all the charge into the phone. And of course, it has USB C, so we win there as well because, I mean, it's USB C and it can hook up to my Android phones and any future Apple phone. Um, that I most likely won't own, but other people in my family do. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And it hook connects to the new uh, Google phone. So that's a great win as well. So there you go. Nice, strong connection. It will charge that way. And of course, you have the stand as well. All right. I mean, uh, I have some links below. If you use those, it does help to support the channel. So please give it a go. Thank you very much.
All right, so now we're going to deal with images, uh, PDFs and other things, actually. And this has been a big win for me for customers because I can take their images or PDFs. Images being handwritten notes that they take photos of on, this, on the field, and, and we just take them into the database. These could be put onto a Google Drive or um, so many different systems. In this case, uh, it's a Google Drive. And then I'm going to use PDF Co., which is a great way to just take PDFs and turn them into images because we want more than OCR at this point. Now, once we have that data um, and we just pass it to the Analyze Image for GPT or ChatGPT. Um, now, let me go look for it again so I can show you. So I went to ChatGPT and Analyze Image. And then I just pass that Byerny data into it, and then I give it a prompt to do something with it, including the JSON. Now, we're not using that structured data tool. We're putting it in here. Um, I'll explain why in a moment, but you can kind of see how we just set this up to, so that it will handle that, that JSON. It won't be um, what I want. It's going to be actually a string, which is tricky. Um, so when this comes out the other end, we'll see a string of... Of, of that data. So as you can see right there, that's just a string. I really can't use that. Even if I grab the set node and try to object objectize it, uh, it really is not going to work without some more work or code nodes and other things. So, I mean, I mean, cost-wise, efficiency-wise, I could probably make this a code node and make it work. But what I tend to do uh, is I grab another AI. Again, you can use cheaper, cheaper models. Uh, I think in this case, I'll use 3.5 Turbo again. So you see the, the value uh, of the model versus how many times they're doing this. And you can figure this out. So uh, I don't want to add the AI agent. Sorry, I'm going to just add the OpenAI one. And I'll show you why in a moment. Um, so let's see here. Let me go grab it. And, and now we're going to take that and put it there. And we, we're we not using the agent. So we no longer get the um, the structured output tool. And we can. We can go right back to the agent and do that. But what I'm going to do here is take advantage of uh, uh, OpenAI's decent JSON parsing. Really good JSON parsing, actually. It's kind of cool. And we'll go down and we'll grab 3.5 again just to kind of just play around with the, the least model. And we put this into the system prompt, and now we're ready to go. We've now chained a couple. Now, you could have made this a tool. Uh, you could have made both of them tools. Uh, so you could have passed it to the AI agent in that way as well. Uh, there's a there's a number of ways to do it, but this is how I do it. And I'm just looking here for the heck of it, but you see there's nothing special there that we need. And then we run it, and we get that object that we could then uh, put into a table or anything. We could send it back as, a, as an email to someone. But in, in, in many cases, we're going to put this into a table or into the next step. So in this case, I could grab the, the table um, node, and let's go grab that one. And then we could just shove that data in there. I mean, it's really that easy. Uh, I mean, all the code this would have taken, the testing, the predictability, it, it just, all of it goes away, and the predictability does go up, believe it or not. All right, that is how I have consistently, for a long time now, many, many months, uh, built systems around this type of, of data. All right, good luck on that one. Uh, enjoy it. I hope you uh, can solve some uh, of your customers' problems with it. All right, and this one, uh, I really enjoy this one. So we're using it for research. And so you could have it do different types of research for yourself or the customer. And the prompt is just like, go do this thing. In this case, go research news about no-code tools and automations every day or whatever. And here, we, we tell it with that structure. In this case, I tell it to get three articles because I had some trouble with 10 and whatnot. But you can, we could do other stuff require special format, and we get back to this guy. But in this case, I did it a little differently. Um, we're going to, uh, let me zoom in for a moment. Okay. So in this case, we're going to put it inside of an array. So we have an array. Those weird brackets are those uh, kind of like staples. Uh, and then inside of them are those curly brackets. And inside of them is the object. So now we're going to make two of these objects just to make it more clear for us. Uh, and for it, but I, it already knew, really. And then that array even has arrays because it's an array of objects, and that object has an array of itself. All right, let's zoom back out. All right, so now we, we can auto-fix, which is great. We can also customize retry, but I haven't had to do this yet, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, if you need it, AI can help. Uh, I'm sure their docs are pretty good on it, too. All right, so now when we run this... Um, I pinned it so it just doesn't take forever. 
we get that output. Now, how do we use this? It's, it's nice because now we have an array of objects, but it's in the output key. So remember, uh, you have to now split that out. So in this case, you would then get your three items. Now we've gone from one output to three items, and now we can shove all of that into the database, including uh, all the data I got with the tags and everything. So you can kind of see like the research you could do, the automated um, parsing of documents and other stuff to bring out the data in a way that is uh, tagged, related data, URLs, whatever you can imagine in, in that situation. Great stuff, though, how we can use this AI to process data and, and, and enrich it and, and, and then structure it. It's so important, so good. All right, I hope that one helps you as well. Oh, by the way, I used GPT-5 here just to help with some of the research more than the JSON.